reading Luke 19, 28 to 40. When he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he came near to Bethpudge and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he spent that he sent two of his disciples. And it came to pass when he came near to Bethpudge and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silence, the stones would immediately cry out. We're uh, thinking of this topic, topic, mighty plan. I wonder what this mighty plan would entail. So we're going to look a bit at the, the background, you know, uh, to uh, Pam Sunday. And uh, a, first of all, we're looking at this 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy. And uh, just a, a brief uh, look at this and uh, think about it. So the 69th week of Daniel's prophecy brings us up to around the day of the triumphal ride into Jerusalem. Uh, that's what uh, uh, the historians and theologians uh, tell us. You know. It uh, seems to fit in uh, with the various calculations they, they do. Now, uh, 70 weeks or hectare uh, equals a group of sevens. So uh, that's how it's calculated. 70 times 7 equals 490 years. So when would they start to calculate this from? It would be uh, the, the first 7 equals 49. Was the decree of Artaxerxes to the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Artaxerxes, uh, then the second for 34 years, takes us up to Jesus' ministry and the beginning of the Passion Week. Uh, the, the third one week equals seven years. And uh, that would take you up then to AD 70. Uh, the mighty plan. It's God's mighty, almighty plan. It's a wonderful plan. We read it then in, from the Bible, uh, Daniel 9, 25 to 26. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street will be built again and the walls even in troublesome times. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood and till the end of the war, desolations are, are determined. It was an awful time. Uh, of course, we know about the zealous of those went up to Masada. And so that's, uh, that was AD 70 and the fall of Jerusalem. We, of course, it's all uh, fulfilling prophecy too in, in Zechariah. That was Daniel, now in Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, 
lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Interesting, you see, that it tells us that this colt, uh, this foal, never was ridden on, and never was broken in, but yet uh, his creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, could uh, do that automatically. There is the uh, uh, Jerusalem, of course, as they're coming down the Mount of Olives, and they come through, this is closed up now, built up now, the Golden Gate, this is the, the Eastern Wall, and that is the Eastern Gate, or the Golden Gate, and, and that is uh, reputed the place where the Lord Jesus went in, and fulfilled prophecy, of course, this, of course, area here is uh, at the front is Muslim, because they thought they could block stop if the the Messiah would come again or whatever, uh, that would stop. Nobody would, would go through, built up the gate. But anyway, that's a uh, uh, man tries all kinds of things, you know. So the mighty plan. We think of the commencement, uh, which we thinking a bit about there, their introduction or commencement, and the, the carriage, then the carpet. They lay out the red carpet from uh, and the cry. So it's uh, simple things we're going to think about. So I'm sure that history is very difficult to, to get your head around and to understand only by, uh, you know, study and thinking about it. Uh, the Holy Spirit can guide us and help us in those things. The commencement. Well, it was at uh, Bethany. Uh, starting from Bethany, he might have stayed the night in uh, the home of Martha, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, you know. Uh, and then, of course, on to Bethphage, where they would have, uh, where they got the, the donkey tied in the village there. On the, the slopes of the Mount of Olives, it was. It was there uh, in Bethany, of course, was the home of Jesus' close friends, great friends, uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Uh, and Jesus, the Messiah, gave the starting orders. He was the one. And then the almighty plan is God's plan, isn't it? God's direction. And it's uh, opening up the way for the Lord Jesus Christ to, to go in on this great uh, triumphal procession, as we're thinking this morning about. Anyway, the carriage. Well, here is the, the conveyance, the carriage. Uh, <laughs> not a taxi or, or any particular thing like that, but a young colt, not a horse. Why was that? Well, you see, a young colt was amazing. It could be used to do that. It was also um, a, important a, that it was, a, you know, David, he rode on a mule or a donkey. Uh, they were really not supposed to, no kings were supposed to, though Solomon had his mighty stable of horses. That was against uh, the teaching in uh, Deuteronomy. And, uh, you know, Jesus rode on a donkey, not a horse. A horse would have symbolized more war, or like a war horse, or that, you see. But he was coming to bring peace to the world for the salvation. It was the, the great, his first time he came to bring the gospel of peace and to bring the good news to people, you know. Right. This donkey is untrained, but uh, he's quite a way, very ready to do what he's supposed to do for this great one, Savior. You know. And he's risky, though. It was quite risky, but uh, no problem to Jesus for doing that. Many would be maybe rather worried about it especially the first time they wouldn't be, they wouldn't do their job, you know, that easy and that good, they might try to throw you off. Verse 31, a uh, uh, request was for this donkey at the village of Bedfidge. That was quite, quite wonderful, wasn't it? Indeed. The carpet then. It was the red carpet, you know, it's normally down for most exciting events, but there was no red carpet. For the Lord Jesus. It was their cloaks or clothes. Uh, they spread on the way, you know. 
So they never thought of any of my good cloak, you know. They never worried about that, you know. They were really willing to spread them all out before the donkey as it travelled along and, uh, and to make sure that they had uh, uh, the idea that here was a special person, uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, uh, the one who is going to rule and reign and, and uh, will uh, subdue the nations. Branches from the trees too were cut down. Many times they used the palm branches, uh, Matthew 21, verse 8. And they would use those branches you know, to wave and oftentimes going up to the temple, they would do that. And at this particular time, it was so important to do that. Also made it very special. And it was all the preparation for a king, giving them the full preparation for a king and his majesty, the king, our king and our saviour and our lord. And they were willing to, to do that, wanted to do that, especially his followers. So we go on then, we're going quickly through the cry. What is the cry? They were disciples of Jesus, the followers of S37, particular uh, ones that had been come to know him and follow him and listen to his teaching, and that was great. Their expectations, of course, was great. You know, they, they, it all clicked with them now. They realized, here it is. Here's the fulfillment of prophecy. Here is the one that they all talked about coming, the Messiah, uh, the sent one, uh, the one that was promised, and uh, here it is now. And they, they latched onto it. They had no difficulty with it. They believed it. Uh, and that was quite so wonderful. The promise of God was fulfilled before the very eyes. All the promises that he had made, Zechariah, other parts, yeah, Genesis chapter 49, then it talks about the coat there too, and other places. So it is, this is, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's wonderful to rejoice. That is the other, uh, the psalm, it's fulfilled there, you know, because it, they, there we have Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna, uh, you know, save now, we beseech, you know. And uh, it was because of this. He was the one coming to save and to redeem. To buy us back from the, uh, out of the hands of the old enemy and bring us to a new way, a new life, the joy and the peace and the happiness with him. They worship Jesus. That's what they were doing. They were giving him the worship and the honor and the praise. And, uh, and that is uh, important, isn't it? Saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Luke 19, uh, 38. That, that, that's great. Yes. So, so wonderful. But it's because they are understanding who, what this is. The Holy Spirit is erecting. Quite amazing for them. The truth, you see, had has dawned upon them. Uh, and we notice that happened, you see, when when the uh, uh, disciples too, and the apostles too, uh, after Jesus' resurrection, and, and they, you know, they realized they'd done these things, and, and um, they, they believed that he, he was the Messiah, then the sent one. The, they saw the scripture fulfilled before their eyes. You know, when the truth dawns upon us, when we see that in reality, that is so wonderful. And it's so wonderful for us to know that it all has happened. And there is the proof of it before our eyes. And we're not uh, thinking of something, you know, this, uh, it's not a pie in the sky, it's not porky pies, it's nothing like that. But it's the real truth of God's word for our souls to build us up and it's the building of our souls. It's, it's the word of God, uh, you know, nourishing us and empowering us and, and helping us uh, uh, day by day. The Messiah has arrived. That was great. Right into 
I came into the temple, you know, there, to that area. He didn't come in to worship there because they were worshiping him as they were going along. Save now, you see, Psalm 118. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. That's a spiritual prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's how he's coming. It's God's son, the only begotten son, the, 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 the one who is the sent one. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. And so that is, is, is quite wonderful. Quite amazing, you see, that there again, as David's prophecy, if he was a prophet, he was also a king, but he was also a prophet. And he was directed to write down this. And of course, they, they, that is one that they sang, especially around uh, the um, Passover time. And they would sing those things. Psalms gone up to Jerusalem and then say blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest well you see heaven is the place of peace and peace comes to our souls and peace within peace peace perfect peace in this dark world of sin the blood of Jesus whispers peace within Wonderful that peace, wonderful to know that peace and that joy and that happiness for each one of us, you know, that is great, isn't it? Especially in this day when uh, reminded is the beginning of the Passion Week, you know. Many things is going to happen, but uh, there is the great start off. Wonderful start, you know. But, you know, for some then they'll say, it's a sad Sad for the disciples when they saw him crucified and hanging on a cross. Uh, they said, you know, the thought was he was going to redeem Israel. And now he's all uh, been a kind of the thought loss. But oh, so wonderful then when they realized the tomb was empty and they met the risen Lord Jesus Christ because we have the proof and we have the, that all for us, you see. How great, how wonderful. They were too noisy for these reserved religious leaders. They're making a big noise and a big shout there as they were coming in. And they, the religious leaders didn't like it. And they wanted it all stopped. They were spoiling their, all their idea and their plans. Their plans were, were different than God's plans, than Jesus' plans. And of course, uh, his, his plans are more, is for the spiritual building, the spiritual prosperity, uh, the spiritual growth in grace, and following the Lord Jesus holy and totally. And some of the Pharisees called to him for the good. Teacher, rebuke your, pet, your disciples. Oh dear, you know, they wanted them to stop. How well did they, 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 they called on Jesus to do that. They saw him as the one who was seemed to stir them up. But they, they didn't, he didn't stir them up. He just uh, rode the donkey and simply done that. And they um, put their uh, clothes on the donkey and, and treated it all like an a amazing march procession, a march of triumph. And here is the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Uh, on that first pan Sunday. You know, Jesus says, if he stopped that, the very stones would cry out. The very stones, you see, would praise Jesus. They couldn't do that, you know, at all, could they? And you remember the Cornish preacher, Billy Bray. He, he, he was a great man to shout, praise the Lord, and and they told Billy to try it, you know. Uh, and, you know, he says, you could put me in a barrel, he says. Uh, and he says, I would shout, praise the Lord out through the bug hole. <laughs> Couldn't have stopped. He had a mighty change. But, you know, you remember that Billy, of course, was, was had a, an awful life. And he was a drunkard and drunk all everything and drinking all the time. 
but he was totally delivered from that. And it's a life of praising and glorifying God. How wonderful and how amazing he was great. You know, when he was uh, in the tin mines uh, there down in um, Cornwall and Devon. Why did Jesus weep? What was the reason for Jesus weeping? He wept over Jerusalem. When he saw what happened, when he saw the situation and when he saw the people and all this that was going on, he wept over the city. And so, you know, that was, uh, you know, his great compassion. Though the majority were oblivious to the real peace. They didn't take it in. And they didn't understand this real peace. And Jesus had been speaking to his Disciples in the upper room about this peace. Peace. You know, my peace I give to you. Not the peace the world gives, but his peace. Because he is what? The Prince of Peace. One of his names, isn't it? Jerusalem, of course, was the city of peace. Wasn't it? Spoke, stood for that. Salem. The Salem is Greek for peace. And Shalom is the Hebrew for peace. Jerusalem. So there it was, you see, not there in, in all that for them. Wonderful that there it was standing as the symbol of peace. Salem is a short name for Jerusalem. An old name, you know. Jesus, of course, is the king of peace, and he's bringing peace. Wonderful to bring that peace for us at this Easter time, that we have the real thing. Many are, are going to celebrate this, coming up to this in their own way, and enjoy it in their own way. But the wonderful enjoyment is to know the king of peace, and the peace he's bringing in our hearts and in our lives, to worship and to glorify our great God and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Unveiling the almighty plan. It's the mighty plan of God unveiled, opened out all there now, you see. But it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things excuse me, to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. How wonderful, you see, uh, and that is a great summary of what he came to do. The great uh, blessings, spiritual blessings, and the future hope we have, we can dwell upon that. Well, many, you know, uh, as the Apostle Paul was writing that to the Colossians, there was many people who were following other ways, Gnosticism, and, and uh, uh, they were after many different things, you see, uh, and they didn't know the peace that come surely from God. But there was all of the group of people there that did. So the mighty plan, Christ's peace, and uh, it's, it's so wonderful to know that, and to experience his blessings. So let us pray in closing. Our gracious God, we thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for your wonderful uh, redemption and the wonderful example of the way you marched into Jerusalem in such a wonderful way to prove who you are, what you came to do, and uh, so wonderful that these followers were really latched onto it and really loved it and really proclaimed it. Uh, and such a great proclamation, you know, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed to see you, comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So it all comes. Salvation comes from heaven right down to us. And wonderful, Lord Jesus, that you came to do it. We pray your blessing. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.